We're back here on the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. We're doing yet another scouting report episode as we have been doing so far at the beginning of this NFL draft cycle. And today we've got two offensive linemen in the 2023 NFL draft class, that being Paris Johnson, projected to be a top player selected, and Anton Harrison, who is from the University of Oklahoma. Going to be interesting perspectives on these two guys. Before we get into it, though, folks, I just want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Bet Online. Go to betonline.ag for all the latest updated odds, news, and sports info. If you're going to be betting throughout the playoffs, like me, and making these NFL games a little more exciting, and also separate from if you're watching your favorite team play this weekend or not, it'll be an easy way to make a little extra cash, some beer money, whatever it might be. Do it at Bet Online and use promo code Believe B L E A V to get your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag and promo code BELIEVE. All right, Ryan. I love talking about offensive linemen, man. I, I don't know what it is, but they are so fun to watch. Sometimes the evaluations, I think, for tackles can be a little tricky because a lot of these guys are a little raw. But we've got two guys, I think, that fit that description today, Ryan, is raw. Mm -hmm. Two guys that are not all the way at where they their potential they're sure. not super technically refined, but I think that there's different levels of traits that they both bring to the table that make them, in different levels, valuable at the next level. Yeah, no, I agree. I, it's a it's going to be an interesting comparison because when you look at them, how they're listed, because we don't have the verified measurables. I mean, Anton Harrison from Oklahoma is listed at six six three zero nine, and then Paris Johnson I think is listed at six six three ten. Right, so they are yeah. Mirror images from a listing perspective. We'll see what the arm length and everything else, the actual measurements are when it comes through. But, I mean, to be completely transparent, I was a little lower on Anton Harrison going into the year. And, you know, I, I know we'll get into the full evaluation, but I thought he took a massive step forward. We get Paris Johnson yeah. switching over from right guard to left tackle and making that transition. So a couple of kids that are still kind of new to the position, but two players that obviously have a lot of traits to work off of. Let's start with Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State. And at the beginning of the season, he I was very high on him. I spoke very highly mm -hmm. of him. We watched him play as a guard. And Ryan, I actually think that he has better tape at guard, but his traits and the way that he played at tackle is extremely promising. And what I mean by that is he was more accustomed to playing guard in his in his career. And frankly, as a good athlete, it might be a little bit easier for someone like Paris Johnson, who's a physical player to play that guard spot, but they bumped him out because that was what he was recruited to do. And he was the best offensive lineman. So he should be playing left tackle for this Ohio state team. I think he's at times a little bit inconsistent because of how green he is to the position, but the highs for him on tape when he has his best reps and he's in a good rhythm and he looks clean, he's a lockdown guy. He moves really freaking well. His footwork, I think, is is pretty strong, but it's quick. He's light footed despite being listed at over 300 pounds. And that to me is massive, but there is some technical refinement that needs to be done for a Paris Johnson because mm -hmm. of how new he is to the position. It's not going to just be one season and immediately he's going to be at an elite level. There are very few guys that can make that transition and be immediately good at playing at a different spot. It's not as plug and play as I think a lot of NFL fans and college football fans realize it is. No, I mean, offensive tackle is always a tough transition for guys and the technical aspect is forgivable for a Paris Johnson because, like you said, he has only played one year at left tackle in his college career, right? So there's obviously technical refinement that needs to happen, but I think that we always start the conversation with the traits, right? What do we see on the film? And I think that that's what gets you excited with the Paris Johnson because, I mean, the three most important things that I value as an offensive tackle is, one – Foot quickness, that's what he, something that he has tremendously. You said he moves well to second level, laterally, the kid can move. Then the next is the length profile at, at, all, on top of the size profile, right? So I'm talking about a body composition type of thing, and he has length yeah. for days. You see when he is able to get in proper position and get gain extension at both in the pass game and in the run game, the length is there, right? So he has athleticism with short area quickness, foot quickness, and he has the length. And the last one's flexibility. And I think that's something that we don't talk about enough, but it's something that I mm. value tremendously. Because the one thing about offensive tackle 
is you're going against some of the best athletes in the NFL at defensive end, the Miles Garretts of the world, the Von Millers, the kids, uh, you know, the Nick Boses, the Joey Boses, like the kids that are just made on different planets. So when you're a offensive tackle that is facing a guy like that in increased space, you need to be able to, at times, contort your body in different ways because there's going to be times where a great defensive end, great pass rusher, puts an offensive tackle in a terrible position. And it's about recovery. Well, you can't recover unless you're flexible. And I think that you see the flexibility on film mm-hmm. with Paris Johnson as well. So for, from a physical perspective, it's a check, check, check. Everything. Like you see, yeah. it, right? But to your point, Joe, I think that his, I think his demeanor at times – is still showcasing the sense that he is a physical mauling presence of an offensive lineman. He wants to get hands on you quick. He wants to be physical. He wants to be the aggressor in these types of situations, which hurts him at offensive tackle at times in year one as an offensive tackle. Because I feel like he's trying to quick set a lot, but at times that's going to get you in some bad positions early on if you don't make solid Solid. If you don't gain solid ground, if you don't make solid contact early with your hands, and I think that, that does hurt him at times. And I think that he plays offensive tackle with a little bit of a guard mentality at times. Yes. But when you see their flashes of when he gets into a proper set, whether it's a forty-five or a vertical set, he's a smooth athlete. He's long. He has the flexibility. All the tools are there. And in the run game, he's got dominant, dominant highlights on there right there's do- dominant moments because he is a people mover he's incredibly strong he's powerful and he's explosive so all the tools are there but to your point year one might not be the i it might not be the full indicator of how good paris johnson will be on the nfl level but long term the kid has traits to be special in my opinion yeah absolutely again the traits are the big reason why we're high on a guy like paris johnson again some of those just issues that i spotted were inconsistencies with angles and inconsistencies inconsistencies with hand placement yes i also there were a couple of reps where you actually see him get beat it's not often because he's a, he's a pretty good player he's a pretty good athlete and despite some of those technical issues he still wins a lot of reps but the times he does win i think he needs to improve his upper body strength because like there were a couple mm-hmm. times against georgia and one play in particular that sticks in my head where he got walked back and he got popped back because he didn't have the upper body strength to win that rep. And he got driven back, which led to a sack on on CJ Stroud. Or I think it was either a sack or just general pressure. But those strength things, I think, definitely need, need to improve. It's not like it's at like a Matt Pert level of concern where it's just super low tier and it's going to take years for him to improve. But he does need to get up to a more of an NFL play strength level before I can fully commit to him as – an elite, eventual elite offensive tackle. But again, the main talking point here with Paris Johnson is that he has all the traits and yeah. tackle more than anything is more of a projection more and more. And as the game of football evolves, it feels like offensive linemen are less and less prepared for the NFL because of we can sit here and talk about it for, for days on the issues that have been led to a lack of development for offensive linemen scheme, whatever it might be in college. But for him to have the traits to be really athletic, to move really freaking well, he can be worked on. He can be improved in his time in his first couple of years in the NFL. Every issue that you have with with Paris Johnson Jr. right now is purely from a development and technical perspective, right? Like there's yes. a there's a difference between a physical limitation and a technical limitation. Right now, there are some technical limitations on the film from Paris Johnson. You mentioned hand placement at times. I think set points are a little bit inconsistent at times. And I also think that his pad level isn't great too, because I actually do think he has a power profile to build upon. I just think he plays a little bit high at times right now on the island. So all those things are things in practice, working with offensive line coach, you can improve pretty quickly. But at the end of the day, the unteachables that I always speak about, can't teach length, can't really teach foot quickness. You can improve it, but you can't really make a guy a good athlete, right? Like either they are or they become a great athlete. Like you can improve an athlete, but you can't make a bad athlete a great, a good athlete, right? And he is a good athlete. He's got length and he's a flexible kid. So every time you have all those things, I'm, I'm going to bet on you, right? I'm going to bet on those, those types of traits and to the unte- to the teachable part of it, to the improvements that need to be made. He's also only 21 years old, right? He was mm. born 
July 3rd, 2001. So he will not be, yeah, he will not be 22 until after he is drafted. So he'll be a 22 year old rookie. So he's still a young guy, a young cat that has time to develop as well. So the, uh, the teachable part, I think, will come with time and with experience. But the unteachables are things that you just cannot, you can't coach up, man. Either you have the length or you don't. I'd also add in one of the other unteachable, thing, unteachable things for an offensive lineman is the demeanor. Like he also brings that demeanor. And the other guy we're going to talk about, I think there are actually some demeanor issues. And that's the difference between that. That's the funny part is that physically, I don't think there's many differences between him and Anton Harrison, but it's like Anton Harrison's the Walmart version of Paris Johnson for a number of reasons. And again, we're going to get to that in a second. I don't want to get too ahead, uh, ahead of ourselves. In terms of projection, I see this guy as a top 20 pick. Mm-hmm. I don't want to commit to him any higher because of it, technically, from a technique standpoint, he does need a ton of improvement. He's not right. going to be an immediate plug and play all pro guy. This is not a Tristan Wirfs. Uh, this is not even, I think, an Andrew Thomas where it might take him a little bit to get mm-hmm. comfortable with the position. But because of the position and the lack of development typically for a position like this, very high value. A team that needs an offensive lineman in the top 15 picks, and he's probably going to get drafted even higher than that because of positional value. But yeah. purely from if I'm grading him in a vacuum, in an overall class, say it's a stacked offensive lineman class, even though this year's not that stacked, mm-hmm. I see him as a top 20 pick. Yeah, I mean, in a vacuum, I graded him out as a late first-round pick, but we also have to remember that that doesn't have positional value put into it, right? So with positional value, with how important the offensive tackle position is, especially left tackle, that's – I mean, I'm going to be comfortable taking him personally between picks 10 and 20. Like somewhere in that in that you know teens conversation, 10 to 20, I would be very open to Paris Johnson. But to your point, Joe, I, I imagine that he has a chance to go top 10. I do. Because all those traits are there. It's just when I'm grading out a player, there is a technical side to things, right? There is a short-term forecast versus a long-term forecast, which is going to be a little bit iffy at times. But I think that you see 10 to 20 pick, in my opinion, with the positional value put in. I have a late first-round grade on him. I'm a fan of Paris Johnson. It's just the long-term is going to outweigh the short-term, in my opinion. And again, to be perfectly clear here for any listeners who are still not totally understanding this, again – we grade him as that, but the NFL is going to value him and probably take him a lot higher. We're not yes. saying he's going to get drafted around that spot. This is just the quality of player he is. And frankly, Ryan, I, I, he might be a top seven pick. It might end up happening because outside of Peter Skaronsky, what other tackles are there? It's going to be yeah. him. It's going to be Peter Skaronsky and Paris Johnson Jr. It's going to well, come down to those two guys. And once one of them goes, as we saw last year, which was a okay good, decent quality tackle class. Not mm-hmm. the best we've seen. A lot of guys got overdrafted last year. Joe, I, I think it's. I think you have a solid point there as far as how high the value could be for Paris because, I mean, just doing, just messing around with like some mock draft stuff recently, right? It The board really gets funky after the top four picks. It really does because you're projecting the top two defensive linemen off the board and Will Anderson and Jalen Carter. Then you're talking about the two quarterbacks in the conversation potentially. I know there's probably another quarterback or two that might figure into the top 10. But after that, man, like the the well dries up a little bit pretty quickly. So Mm -hmm. you're going to be betting on a lot of upside. And if you're betting on upside, I mean, is there much better than Paris Johnson in this class? I mean, he's got all that upside to be a, a top flight left tackle at the next level if it hits. 